In some ways, it's never been easier to pick a March Madness champion. Just look at the top seed line and pick one of the four number ones. There are 68 teams in the field, and 20 probably think they have a shot at the title, and at least seven or eight realistically do. But recent tournament history tells us that if you pick a team that's not a number one seed to win your bracket, it's probably busted. Seven of the past nine NCAA champions have been one seeds. That's a 78% success rate. I'm not a gambler myself, but I think the Sharps in Vegas like those kinds of odds. There's more to it, of course. There are qualities shared by most every championship team since the tournament expanded in 1985 that are necessary to survive the grind of winning six excruciating games in less than three weeks, or maybe five if you're at the top of the bracket and get to play against the 16th seed. It starts at the game's most important position. Over the past few decades, nearly every team that's won a championship had a point guard who either entered as a five-star McDonald's All-American or left as an NBA first round pick, preferably both. But this year, that leaves just Ty Ty Washington of Kentucky and Kennedy Chandler of Tennessee. That can't be enough. It can't just be those two. There have to be more contenders than that. Second, regardless of position, a championship team is going to need a pro, preferably more than one. There has not been an NCAA champion that failed to produce an NBA first round pick since 1987 when Indiana and Bob Knight won the title. This year, it could be as obvious as someone like Gonzaga's Chet Holmgren or Auburn's Jabari Smith or the dazzling Jaden Ivey of Purdue, or it could be someone less obvious like freshman reserve Peyton Watson at UCLA, or freshman guard J.D. Davison who hasn't even started a fifth of Alabama's games. NCAA tournament games are so thoroughly scouted by the coaches on each side that they can take away almost every preferred action in almost any time. There has to be a player who can say, you can't take away what I can do with my talent. Next, you are not going to win a championship without being exceptional at both ends of the floor. Defense wins championships, but so does offense, especially in college basketball. If you're deficient on defense, you'll struggle to get that crucial stop. If you can't score at a high level, someone will manufacture enough baskets to beat you. This is 2022, so you have to be able to score from three-point range at a high level. Reigning champ Baylor was number one in three-point percentage last season. Villanova in 2018 was 11th in that category and 12th in Ken Pomeroy's version of three-point usage. The recruitment of A.J. Griffin has given Duke one of the sweetest shooters in the country. Gonzaga has two starters shooting better than 40%. Most of the rest are a bit reliant on a single three-point weapon, but they'll make the cut here. Lastly, this being basketball, it still remains an essential element to be able to protect the rim. But even with so many talented big men in the game now, because the NBA teams aren't drafting guys like Kofi Coburn of Illinois, this requirement eliminates nearly everyone who's left on the board. Duke has Mark Williams though, and Gonzaga has Chet Holmgren swatting shots down all over the place. If it really came down to just Duke and Gonzaga, would anyone be surprised? I don't think they would, and I know all of us would be entertained.